Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome back to Funilla County. And last time out, we built ourselves a transport hub and finished off Tyler Town Centre. Lots of people coming backwards and forwards between the trolley bus and the train, which is always very, very satisfying to see. And of course, because this is the only intercity connection that we currently have, this bus station is really flourishing. There's an awful lot of people coming to and from it, which is, again, great, great, great to see. But for today, I am going to turn my attention all the way back over on the other side of the city to sorting out this horrendous mess of highway networks. We've got this ridiculous slope here, go down and then immediately up onto the bridge. Incredibly sharp bits coming down off the bridge on the other side of the highway. Very similar over this side as well. I mean, what is that <laughs> slope for a highway bridge is nonsense. And again, dipping down here and this horrendous intersection as well. No, we're getting rid of all of this and we're going to start again. I actually just noticed there's a cute little prop car underneath there. I've not seen that before. So we're going to rip out this whole section of highway, this interchange, and we're going to redo it. And what we're actually going to do is do a five-way interchange for this. So I'll flash up on screen now my very rough, <laughs> drawn in Microsoft Paint by hand diagram of this interchange that we're going to be doing. But yes, it will be five ways. We'll have one route going down into the highway into the city. Obviously, these two directions of the highway here, but then we're also going to have a collector which flows across this intersection with connections in all directions, with the one exception of being getting uh, off this highway here and onto the collector. They won't be able to do that. So I'll need to connect at this junction from this highway and come on to collector that way. I'm kind of thinking if they're heading out of the city, they're going to be on this highway and therefore they're not going to need to go on this collector. So that's really the logic behind that. So to start off with, we are actually going to need to open this tile up here in order to get access to this full wave of highway and give ourselves enough space to play with. Let's go ahead and do that. Now that does leave us with no tiles available, although we only need a population of 16,000 to get to the next one. So it's not too far off at all. And when we start building out on this peninsula and in various other areas around here, we'll certainly easily hit that. So I'm not too worried about being restricted by the tiles at the moment. Like I said earlier in the series, though, I will be opening up 25 tiles at some point. Let me know your thoughts on that. Do you want us to go to the full nine tiles before we do that? Or are you happy for me to open 25 earlier and give ourselves a little bit more freedom in where we're building around our city? Let me know what you think. OK, so let's firstly pause the game. We're going to be on pause for pretty much this entire thing. And we're going to start just completely <laughs> removing this highway. We're going to start entirely from scratch with this. Things are not the right height, are not level, and it really doesn't look good. I honestly don't know what Colossal Order and Paradox were thinking when they kind of looked at some of these slopes and went, yeah, okay, that's okay, I'll sign that off, <laughs> because I would not have done if I was them, <laughs> frankly. So let's get rid of all of that. We'll also trim this highway back just a little bit further, get rid of this junction too, so all of these roads can go. And we're going to start from here. So I'm just going to start by looking at the terrain quickly because this where we're going to put the intersection is actually relatively flat apart from these little hills here which are a really nice feature I will admit but I am going to go ahead and just flatten those out. So let's get a slightly larger brush size we're going to go to level terrain actually we'll turn up the intensity for this and we're just going to remove this little peak here just so that it doesn't interrupt the flow of our intersection. And we can, of course, put it back if we want to afterwards. We're not going to do the slopes on the side. We're going to manage with those. But I am just going to pull this back a little bit further here so that we've got a little bit more room to play with with the intersection. And we'll just smooth off this banking a tiny bit there. OK, so first things we are going to do is connect back up these highways and make it nice and smooth and realistic and not like how they built it, frankly. So I'm actually just going to trim back this rail and this road for a second. Actually, that's probably all right, because I want to follow this tree line around. I want to honour the original position for the highway. So we will start by just putting in a straight section here like that. And then again, we'll mirror it on this side. And we want to kind of snap in close to it, but not too close. I'm kind of thinking, what is the gap of the main highway? So we want to kind of have a look at the gap of the main highway here. And it does look, it's reasonably far apart, actually. Particularly because we're playing in vanilla. We don't want it right up next to it because that may cause us problems. So we do just want to go one step away 
and then we'll draw in our highway with those road guidelines on and make sure that's all nice and level. So yeah, that looks like a pretty similar gap to what we've got the other side. Okay, so let's start with this bridge. <laughs> now, I'm going to be talking a lot about how to make networks nice in vanilla ultimately this, this episode. So the key thing is let's get the elevation step right down because that's really going to help you. And remembering that the optimal distance is 12 as well. If you go over that, you'll start to get kind of weird things happening. So that's really where you want to go to. Let's make sure all of our snapping is on for this. And what we want to do is just take this ultimately really, really slowly. I want to keep this highway as level as possible going across those bridges. So you can see here, that's nice and level. Here it starts to go down. If we go a bit further, it's even further down. But that's at the 12 point mark. And I think if we raise it up there, actually, it does look like it is going up a little bit. So actually, where we had it back here, that looks very flat. So this is going to be a trial and error <laughs> in terms of how to get this right. Very much so this episode. So again, we'll put in the other side there for that section because we know that's a good height. And then we'll just continue this on piece by piece, ultimately, until we get a really nice flat highway network in. So that's looking pretty good to me there. And we'll go ahead and snap into those guidelines and do the other side nice and flat. Yes, good. And it's going to be some pretty tall bridges over these rivers, but I am OK with that because we are going to be introducing ferries at some point. So I don't see too much of an issue with that. Now, putting in bridges, you want to be aware of your big suspending arches here. So we've got three in there. We could go for four if we wanted to, but I think three actually looks pretty nice. So having it like that crossing the river, and again, we'll have a look a little look at the height. Now that is sloping down very gently, but actually it's plenty high up enough over the river for ferries to go through. So that's not a problem. And it's not so severe that it looks silly. But also we've got to be aware that we're going to have to come down a little bit to meet the highways over here. So let's just have a little look at that terrain. And you can see that slopes down actually almost immediately from this point here. So before we do that, though, of course, let's go ahead on the other side and snap in our bridge there. We'll just come down and make sure that they're absolutely the same height. And of course, we're getting our nice suspending arches in exactly the same place as well, which really helps to create a bit of realism, a bit of symmetry there. Now I'm going to come on straight with this. And again, we're just going to get down. It looks like the land's pretty flat underneath this, so we shouldn't have too much of a problem. I think that's probably a slight gentle slope down, which I am OK with. Again, let's put in the piece on the other side like that. And then we're going to want to bend this round. And this is where it starts to become a little bit more tricky to get the heights right. And it may be a case of putting it in and then getting rid of it. But you can see that's now sloping up. So let's drop this down a little bit like that. Again, that looks pretty flat. And we'll do the same thing the other side. So now from here, we want to be a little bit careful <laughs> in our bend. So I'm snapping into the road guidelines of this road here that you can see. And let's bring that down because that's definitely raising up quite clearly there. And I think, yeah, like that, we've actually got a pretty decent slope in there. Let's again, let's snap into those guidelines like that. Let's bring that round in a nice curve. Again, we'll just come down and check that it's nice and smooth. And then hopefully we'll be able to join this up with a much smoother connection. And that's actually looking pretty good. It does kind of dip down a little bit here. I'm wondering if actually we should trim back this highway just a little bit. We'll remove those two sections and then see if we can get this in a bit smoother. But now we have a much, much more smooth, much better looking highway. And I'm noticing actually there's a slight hump in the middle here. So in the pursuit of perfection, I am just going to redo that. And this should be much more easy now because we've got those two sections in at decent heights. So hopefully just putting this in like that should get rid of that slight hump. It looks like actually it's this section here on this side. So let's just trial and error again, do that. And that's better. Yes, we've got rid of that very, very slight hump here. So that is looking pretty good to me. Now, that's an awful long bridge section, I do realise. And what we could do instead of that is actually embank it. Now that we know the heights that we want for our highway, it'd be much more easy to do that. But I actually want it raised because I definitely want networks coming underneath here. We're going to build out quite a large town here, a kind of second downtown, I'm thinking. 
So we want access underneath there. So I'm going to leave it as a bridge for now. And we may embank small sections of it when we come to design this area. So yeah, that's how you can get a nice smooth bridge over your rivers just by taking it super, super slow in each section at a time. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. So we've got those in and honestly it's not that difficult and it didn't take that long it's just going slowly go section by section make sure it's straight like this bridge does actually slope down a little bit but the land is so much lower on this side it's not practical to have it straight would have a really steep slope within our tile boundary out here so this is the best option and it still looks a hell of a lot better <laughs> than it did in just the base map so I'm quite pleased with this and yeah absolutely no excuse for bumpy vanilla interchanges it really doesn't take that long just go slow so the next thing I do want to do is start looking at how we're going to connect this highway onto this one but before we do that to make sure we have enough space I'm going to put in our collector which is going to flow over this road here so we're just going to use a four lane road, I think, for this. I don't think it needs to be six lane. Obviously, if traffic demands it later on, then we will absolutely upgrade it. But I quite like it to be relatively parallel for a lot of its position to our highway that we have here. So we'll come out a little bit and we'll go down like this. And actually, we're just going to clear out the trees before I do that. Let's just help our game performance. Always good practice to do that. I'm going to just map this out and this is going to curve round to meet this intersection here on our ring road highway. So we'll just grab this. Let's go back into freeform, always making sure that we're snapping to angle when we're connecting roads onto an existing one. Then if you don't like how the angle snaps on freeform here, you could always turn it off after you've snapped in that initial 180 degrees. So that's another little trick for you there. And we'll just go down like this. So we'll come out from this one now, actually. See if we can find the road guidelines for this road like that. We'll create a nice smooth curve there, which adds a bit more interest than just going straight up and straight across. And then we are actually just going to bring this one straight across, in fact. So we'll bring it down to around about there. And then we're going to start lifting this up. So again, this is where the increments of 12 comes in. If we go above that, you'll see it breaks it up and we're going to have a super sharp slope, but that gives us the most gentle slope that we can get if we do it at that distance of 12. And that'll give us enough height to come over our highway here. Now, I do actually want a slip road flowing underneath it, so I'm conscious of where these pillars are going to land. So I'm actually going to place that in there and see if we can get it yeah, halfway between with the pillar and then a little bit further this side as well, which will give us room if we come down to have roads flowing underneath there. That's so funny seeing the car sunk into the ground. That'll obviously be fixed once we press play. 
Now from here we can go to an increment of 12 again and we'll just bring this back down to ground height like so. Now I actually just moved this a couple of blocks over this way because I realised I wanted a little bit more room on this side to play with before it goes into the bridge. But it's exactly the same principle there. So let's talk about how we're going to connect this all together. And to start off with, I am just going to clear out some of the trees in this area. Oh, we're going to go pretty close to these very small houses there, but I'm kind of fine with that. It's slightly more low income housing over that side. So them in being in proximity to the highway, I'm not too concerned with. And we can, of course, add sound barriers if we're worried about noise pollution. So let's bring this highway just a little bit further up. And actually, that is the one with the sound barrier there. So we'll bring this out to about that distance. Actually, maybe even a touch closer. And then we're going to go into landscaping now. And we're going to break this highway here because ultimately what I do want is these roads flowing underneath it in a nice trumpet interchange this side. This is how we're going to connect this highway onto this one. It's a, just a very simple trumpet. So in order to do that, we're going to press down the landscape here. Now we need to make sure that we're going far enough that we can go under the road here. So that is probably plenty far enough, actually, maybe a little bit too deep. What we'll do then is we'll go to the small brush size. And I'm going to click the bottom of that and just level out a section which is going to flow underneath this highway, I'm trying to get it in the middle of these two coming this way. So yeah, that should be OK. And then what we will do here is create our connection rows in here again, just to make sure that when we put that highway over, we've got enough room before we start terraforming out everything else. And we'll go back into our three lane highway and then we're just going to create a bridge across like so. And we do want to check that that's nice and flat, which it is. So we'll bring this one out to the same height. Little bridge across and then back there. And then, of course, let's flip this one around. And yeah, that's going in pretty nicely. Do we have any modern art? I think we've managed to actually escape it there. <laughs> it may change as we start to change these roads, but that's good enough for now. Then we want to come back into landscape and we want to create some nice gentle slopes for this. So we're going to click on the edge of our highway here, which is the height we want it to get to. And then we're going to click on the bottom and drag it up towards it, which will create a nice gentle slope up from these smaller highway connection roads here. So something like that will do nicely. And then the other side, I want this to curve round. So I'm actually going to click here. And then again, we're going to go to the bottom of the slope and we're just going to drag this up and around like so. And this can take a couple of times. So we'll click again and we'll drag and we'll just make sure this is flowing up and round this corner nice and smoothly. And we can just use a little bit of smooth tool as well if we're worried about any sections just to tidy them up. But then what we do want to do is see if we can uh, <laughs> get this curve in nice and smooth. So we're going to go to curve tool and this section here that's coming down. So they'll connect up nice and simply onto this direction here. This one is going to come up and round in a trumpet and over and connect onto the highway this side. So that's the first one that we're going to put in. Now with this, you can see when the second line at the bottom here comes up, that's a unit of five. So I'm actually going to go to seven. So we're going to go two more than that. We'll click here. Then we're going to do the same in this direction. So you can see we've got five there. We go one, two more, that's seven. And that will give us a nice curve there. And then if we come down, we can just check the slope of that. And that doesn't look too bad to me. So I'm OK with that. And before we connect it up, I do want to add in the connection that we're going to get to this side. So I'm going to snap into the road guidelines of the highway here. And yeah, we're going to bring that across in a little bridge like that. That does look a little bit bumpy. <laughs> but let's actually undo that. We can come from further back and sometimes be quite helpful with this. Just spotted I changed those to the wrong direction. So let's change those back. So let's snap into the guideline over here. We'll come as close as we can up to the edge like this. And then if we bridge across now, it's going to have trouble with it. So let's actually just use the tools and raise it up. And then we'll need to come down to ground height to make sure that we're getting a nice flat connection here. And that is not too bad. Let's bring it back to ground height, which is not liking. <laughs> so again, it's all about trial and error, honestly, with this. Let's brace that connection and see if we can connect it up this way. And that's not too bad. I might try and tidy that up in the detailing time lapse, but that will be OK for now. And then we're just going to complete this curve. So similar principles, we want to do the same unit. So I'm actually going to go five here. 
we'll go five this way and then it is a slightly tighter curve as we come to the end there but then what we want to do is mirror it with this side so again this is about snapping into those road guidelines as you go like this we're going to just continue it round you might have to turn snapping off once again you once you've snapped into that 180 degree angle to bring it round nice and smoothly we'll turn angle back on so let's connect it in here and then hopefully we can use road guidelines to connect this up nicely we're on curve tool still and we find the guideline there it is then we can bring it round like that which is okay it's not too bad it's nice and compact at least and then we can just flip this road round so it's going in the correct direction like that and let's just come down and check our slopes and it all looks pretty good actually to me I'm quite happy with that and then we just need to do the same thing this side in terms of connecting them back up to the highway so we'll come from this highway we'll come up like this and this is going to have to curve in just a little bit like so but we do also want the connection out this way as well so let's start to bring that out and we don't want the landscape interrupting this too much we want that one to be flat which of that is all right like that and we'll bring it round to connect up to the highway this side so let's actually just bring out a slip road here and then we can use curve tool to connect this in again snapping into those road guidelines to make that nice and neat although that does not look <laughs> neat at all so let's try that again yeah so something like that is a little bit better now let's have a little talk about this section because this is actually going to flow on quite a bit further here and we're actually going to go i think into a bit of a bridge section in order to connect this up so this will be a little bit more tricky to do but it should look quite nice and neat once it's finished and the reason why we bring this up so far will become apparent because we need to connect in our collector road that's going over the top here Okay, so the next thing is connecting in this direction here. So we're going to bring off a very small slip road this side and we're going to run it straight along the highway for a little bit. So I'm just going to connect into the road guidelines there, bring that out to there and then we'll connect it into the highway and it gives us a slightly smoother exit ramp there. Of course, we'll need to flip those around too. And then this road is going to curve up in this direction and we might just need to terraform this out a little bit further so let's go ahead and do that we'll just smooth out the landscape and push it up against these underpass roads like that let's go back in and grab our highway road and then we can bring it in like that which is not too bad and I think we will change this to a two lane highway as well for lane maths. I'll come back to the other side in a second because we're going to actually connect this in slightly further up. So we'll go up like that. And then this looks a little bit smoother coming in here. It's not perfect with vanilla, but it's OK. So now from this direction, they can get onto the highway this way. But we also need them to collect up to this collector. So what we're going to do from this exit ramp, we're going to use the same exit ramp and we're going to bring out a road by mirroring this a little bit but then curving round into an intersection here so we'll go like that and then connect it straight into there and then we can come back here and collect this into our slip road here so yeah that's not too bad and then also from this collector as well so they can get onto the collector now from this side but coming from this direction we also want to facilitate that so we're going to split this off from this point let's turn off snapping for this and see how close we can get to this other road so we want to mirror a little bit of that curve as we go around again so that things kind of look nice and neat something like that and let's turn on snapping again we can bring this out a little bit straighter here and then we can bring this round our trumpet curve there something like that to connect into this road here there we go so they can come off the highway here they can either go up this way to go onto the highway this way or they can come off here back onto the same highway but from this point of view we're then going to collect it up into the collector this side so this is where we do need a bit more terraforming we are going to flatten out more of the land this side let's just make this slightly larger and we'll pull this out here this bank is going to be pretty extreme but we can do some detailing on it to make it sit in <laughs> a little bit better than it currently does 
And I'm actually just going to redo this endpoint here because that wasn't flat onto the ground. So let's grab our collector road and we'll just bring that out straight again here. So back to highway. So we want an exit that is coming off here like this and then coming around into a connection here. So let's go to the two way road for this. I'm going to bring that out straight just a tiny bit and then we'll bend it round. We want this to kind of sit in the middle here. So something like that. We'll go back to our one lane roads. This way is going to feed into that direction. And then from here, let's turn off snapping for this. That is going to feed into this road if we can get it to. OK, so I have just moved our collector slightly further left. So we had a little bit more room for this junction to fit in this side. But this has gone in quite nicely, I think, now like that. And I have just moved out that curve a little bit. So it's all looking quite nice, I think. So if we just have a little highway check, so coming from this direction, we can come off here and get onto that highway there. We can come off here, take this diversion, come round and onto this collector here. From this direction, we can come off and get onto the highway this way. And then again, come round onto the collector and go either direction this way. And then from the highway coming from downtown, we can come off and onto the highway this direction. We can come round here and onto this highway. or We can come round and take this slip road and onto the collector. So we've got lots and lots of different options here. And then from the collector as well, we can get off onto the highway in this direction, but we do need to add in another slip road to get it onto this direction. But also I think actually it would be nice to head it back onto the highway heading into downtown too. So let's firstly do that. And we'll just adjust this intersection here. We'll add in a two-way highway road, just coming straight out of there like this. We'll go back into our slip lanes. And then what we are going to do is just bring out a connection this way. So we're actually going to make that curve a little bit sharper. Let's turn off snapping with this so we can get it in a little bit more nicely. And then angle back on and we'll connect it into the highway here. We'll upgrade that section, of course, to three lane there. So the lane mathematics all makes nice sense there. And then let's connect these in. And then finally, we just want a slip road heading off in this direction. So I'm going to bring out a bridge actually for this, which is going to head over the highway this way. Again, the key thing being we want to make sure this is nice and flat as we come down here. We can start to come down to ground height right about here. That is a little bit steep. So I'm wondering actually if we can come down a little bit further, a little bit closer, that might be beneficial. So something along those lines would work nicely. So now from the collector, you can get off onto the highway this direction this direction and also back onto the highway going into downtown. But before we come on to detailing, I do also want to add some lane mathematics into our main highway here. So we're going to upgrade this whole middle section to a two lane highway, which will give us really nice lane mathematics for the main highway flowing all the way across the map. Will really help out with vanilla traffic as well, because you get that dedicated turning lane on any exit points. And this two lane highway does also come with the mass transit DLC. If you haven't already got that, please do consider using my instant gaming link in the description below. You can get all City Skylines DLCs, Planet Zoo, a whole massive host of other games at really great discounted pricing. And it also helps to support the channel. But now we are going to come on to a little bit of detailing. So we're going to be adding in fences and security fences around some of our slip roads around here. Some nice rocks bringing in the trees and foliage around it. But that's pretty much it. So it's going to be a light touch on detailing today, but hopefully an interesting network episode for you, creating somewhat of an interesting vanilla intersection here. And of course, going over how to avoid all of those crazy bumps that you can find yourself with in vanilla highway networks. I think we've done a pretty good job of making this nice and smooth here.
So we have a massive five year to change in. And I have to say, it's really immensely satisfying seeing all the cars moving around this. And I'm actually kind of surprised they're using this collector, although I guess not because the industry is there. A lot of trucks are using this to get onto the highway rather than going on this one, which is actually really, really good news because it means that this highway will be freed up for all the residents and other industry that we're putting out further into the map. So hopefully having this extra collector in will really improve traffic, particularly if we're funneling all this industrial traffic from over this side down this way to get in and out of the city. So in terms of the detailing, we have gone through and added little bits of fencing in small places. Like obviously I felt a crash barrier in the middle would be appropriate under here. A little bit of undergrowth around the bottom as well, I think made it feel a little bit more natural. And then as we come up to the top again, fencing around here where they've got a quite sharp drop off down that cliff, I thought it was appropriate there. Um, little bits of fencing here. Now, obviously, we can't get the sound barrier on the slip road, the highway slip road. So I've used a bit of ore fencing here just to block that off from the residents this other side through the forest. I've got quite a lot of tree coverage there, so the noise pollution shouldn't be too bad as the highway gets busier. And then down the centre, we used a bit of zoo fencing with a couple of little trees, lots of overgrowth as well, which really helps to make it feel a bit more natural. And then we've got a few strategically placed rocks around, like this big one here. I thought it would be a nice entranceway into the city when you're coming down from this highway. Going past all of these lovely big rocks and round onto the little slip roads here to wherever it is that you're going to. But yeah, it all seems to be working really nicely and I'm just really, really pleased with how these flat highway bridges have come out as well. It just goes to show that this is what they could have done to start off with, but they didn't. <laughs> they signed off some pretty awful stuff, let's be honest. But yeah, there we go. That is how you can create a pretty smooth and nice, good looking five way interchange in Vanilla City Skylines. But for today, that is going to be it. So if you have enjoyed the episode, likes, comments and shares are greatly appreciated. And do let me know in the comments your thoughts about 25 tiles. Should we go all the way to nine and then unlock it or can we unlock it earlier? Let me know your thoughts on that. 
that's all from me for now so thank you so much for tuning in and i'll catch you again next time bye bye